Hello, ladies. I would love to start with prayer and just thank Father for all the women who have decided to not only come and join us today to learn, but to be encouraged in you, Father, and that they would be able to carry this into their families for the future generations. And may all the words that are spoken throughout all of them be a sweet fragrance to you. Oh, may you give each of us ears that hear and eyes that see what your spirit is saying. And may anything that is not of you be washed away. I pray as we continue in the waiting of when we will see you face to face, that chains will be broken, walls will be crumbled, and the prison doors will be thrown open for healing and restoration unto you. You have let me know in the past that if I'm not living for you, then I'm living against you. And so, Father, help me to live for you. Help us to live for you. Not only me, but every listening ear for you. May each and every family be blessed by the teachings that they've heard today, that they're going to continue hearing, and may it continue to minister to their hearts, Father. Oh, we bless you, Father, and we thank you for this time together. Thank you, Abba, for working out technical difficulties and just for loving us, for loving us. Thank you, Abba, in your precious name. Amen. All right. So I hope you ladies have been enjoying the conference. It is amazing. Absolutely love, 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 love it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and grab your pen and paper. I'm sure you have it sitting right there. And so you're probably ready uh, to take notes. So as women, you know, we seem to wait for lots of things, right? We have heard testimonies today of waiting uh, and the way the father has brought women through different waiting periods. We are in a time of waiting for our redeemer. Uh, we're in a time of waiting for so many things, you know, when we're, when we were little girls, we were waiting for our Prince Charming. We wait, we wait, we wait. How many, how many of us as little girls played the bride? I'm sure all of us, because we're girls. That's what we do, right? And then the day comes and we meet that special someone our Prince Charming, maybe he finds us. And then yet we wait, we wait for the wedding day and there's lots of preparation. And I'm not gonna go into all those things that we wait for, but I'm sure you're probably thinking of many things right now. I'm waiting for so-and-so to join me on this walk. I'm waiting for such and such to happen. And then, you know, once we get married, we're waiting to get pregnant if we want children. And then I'm waiting and I'm longing for labor because I want to meet that little one. And then in the labor, we're waiting for the birth. And then we're waiting for my child, my baby to be potty trained, maybe walk talk, say their first words, right? Always the waiting for more. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Today I'm going to talk about waiting for our wedding day. The wedding day when we see our groom, the holy one, face to face. There's just so much waiting going on. Oh my goodness. So this brings me to the Song of Songs and the Shulamite Bride. Verse 1, 3, or chapter 1, 3 says, Because of the fragrance of your goodly oils, your name is oil poured 
support. Therefore, the maidens love you. Now our children call us mom. Our husbands call us honey, babe, love, you know, the little pet names that we have for each other. Our parents call us by our name, the name they gave us, and sometimes by our full name, right? You know, like when you're in trouble, we were in trouble and we hear that name, mine's Deborah Ann. I knew when I heard that, it was like, oh no. Our friends call us by our name. And if our name is constantly being poured out, poured forth as oil is poured forth, what do we want our fragrance to be? And hopefully all of this will come together for you and you'll be able to emit the fragrance that he loves, that the Holy One loves. And this thought came to me years ago after reading about my name being poured forth, poured out. And I thought, oh my goodness, when people hear my name, what do they think? More importantly, what does Abba think when he hears my name? That is a thought, right? Well, I'm here to remind you, and Holy Spirit's here to remind you, that Abba loves you. He chose you. For it's been written, we know brothers and sisters loved by God that he has chosen you. He says you're a child of God, right? But to all who have been who have received him, those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become God's children. He calls you a friend in John, right? He says, I no longer call you slaves because the slave does not understand what his master is doing, but I have called you friend because I have revealed to you everything I heard from my father. And there's many more things he calls us. He calls us his temple, a new creature. We become the righteousness of God in Christ, no longer that slave, but a child and an heir. So I'm chosen, holy and blameless before him. I'm redeemed and forgiven by his grace. And then he calls us, me, me, and you, his bride, his beloved. And you know what else he loves? He loves fragrance. And it says right here in Song of Songs, as well as in the Torah, where he talks about the fragrance lifting up to him, the sacrifices, the aromas, um, the sense in the tabernacle, in the temple. Now, our human mind, right? with that evil inclination, wants to tell us all the bad things, of course. But I encourage you to remember what he says and not the things that your history has maybe brought you. Your past may be tainted, then, but remember him, what he says, because he delights in you. In fact, how honorable is your desire for one another? Know that he delights in you just as you delight in him and that it's an honor. He chose you, remember? He chose you. And the Song of Songs goes on to say and talk about that darkened maiden. And so as I read through this, I wondered, what is darkened in me? What does that mean? And you know, the Shulamite bride, she felt the weight of her life, being the only daughter of her mother, the favorite of the one who bore her. And so whenever a child is treated as a favorite, 
the other siblings can become quite jealous. Just remember the story of Jacob and Esau, or Joseph and his brothers, or if we go back oh, even farther, Cain and Abel. Ah, so I encourage you to let this betrothal time cleanse you. You know, the preparation time of preparing ourselves for Yah and bring you freedom. Let it bring you freedom. The preparation time for the groom. And you'll get the sense that I kind of go back and forth between our heavenly groom and our earthly groom. And so I encourage you to walk in the role that Father's already given, already ordained for you as the beautiful woman you are. You already are. That he already created you to be. And that he's continuing to work out in you. And though I may be dark and dry as that Shulamite bride, or you may be thinking, oh, I've got some dark, dry places too. Maybe burnt by the sun from working in the fields, working, not getting any help. Maybe I have been made to do things myself and I feel alone, overworked. Don't forget that you're chosen. You know, I've always been, to my detriment at times, a woman who can do it myself. Um, my history has kind of molded me that way, I guess you could say. And I would think, and still do, I can figure it out. I can get it done. But I'm learning to let that mindset go and ask for help or reach out to others. I used to put up walls, and maybe some of us here have too, just to get through whatever it is we're dealing with maybe ne neglecting my own feelings, my own emotions, such as, I really do need help. I ask myself, do I have a wall up? Do I have a wall around my heart? Because we can make those. And verse seven and eight says, it speaks of resting the flocks at noon. And this is our shepherd giving us rest right by his tent. And I believe when we come to his tent, and for a lot of us, we know that to be Shabbat because that's his resting place, his resting day, we can rest. He meets us where we're at. He meets with us. We can enter into his tent of rest. He's just waiting for us to step in. And you're invited to rest in your father, for this is what he does for us. He gives us rest. And for me, <laughs> it's usually rest from myself, which is much needed. So the past three weeks, we have been in the throes of moving. Let me tell you, I've had to wait a lot. <sighs> the day we closed on this house, I had to wait for the roommate of the owner to finish cleaning all of his stuff out. I waited over at my daughter's while my son was here, or not my son, my husband was here helping the man get his things together and move out. He was standing around waiting a lot too, though. <sighs> and I'm still waiting for carpet to be installed upstairs. It needs redone. So I'm waiting for that. But guess what? In that waiting, we have been blessed. We had to wait to order it. And then it took several days and a mess up and all this. But that waiting is a blessing because it has saved us a ton of money. So in the waiting, we get blessed. We can't move up and upstairs and there's been boxes all over. And, you know, when I did my check with Charlie, she's like, okay, just move the boxes out of the way, blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, so, you know, I'm waiting for the carpet to be in salt. And in my waiting, I have hope because it's going to be beautiful when it's done. And so as I was waiting, 
and preparing for this conference, I, of course, was meditating on the word wait or waiting. And it brought me to Genesis 49, 18, where Jacob is prophesying over his sons. And there's a waiting there. In fact, it says, for your salvation, I wait, Lord. And I'm like, why is that in there? Well, Dan is waiting for his salvation from the Lord. The meaning of this verse, when I searched, the meaning of this verse, I trust to God for the salvation of the one in the one of the commentaries I found, trusting for that salvation. And the word in Blue Letter Bible means to wait, look for, hope, expect. And I love that. Hope is what stuck out to me. The hope for our salvation. Dan was waiting for the hope of his salvation. And that's what I'm waiting for. And we're all waiting for our redemption, right? I'm sure all of you are too. So this brings me to the waiting for our groom and how we can prepare for him. Every girl, every girl wants to be ready on their wedding night, but how? How do we prepare? Well, I believe Father has given us some tools I believe it's a journey of preparing our heart. And what does that mean? What does that mean? We might be wondering, how do we prepare our heart for our earthly father on that wedding, for that wedding day? We go through that waiting period. And it's just like now waiting to see the Holy One, the groom of all grooms. So when father brings and begins to bring freedom to our heart, we have to do the work. And sure, it's not easy, but it's so worth it. Like, it wasn't easy cleaning, cleaning, cleaning this house. It's not easy, wasn't easy waiting for him to get everything out. It's not way easy waiting for the furniture to be in the right place, to be able to move upstairs, to get the carpet, all of those waiting things, and you have stuff you're waiting on too. And so because we all have a different history, I'm not going to go into all the issues that can reside in our hearts. But if you want to work on some of those, um, some of those things, let me know because I offer sessions where we release the energy of the trauma, the emotions that cause us to put up walls, heart walls, and if you've never experienced anything like that, that type of session, oh, if you're stuck with healing, waiting on healing, it's really a cool experience because our issues live in our tissues and our bodies tell all of our secrets. And so releasing the energy of that waiting period, the trauma, the, the emotions from things that have been difficult it feels so good to just let them go. And if father spoke and created the whole world, that's some pretty powerful energy. And he says, we will do even greater things than that. So, all right. So on to the part of this talk, that's all about using essential oils and how we can use them as tools to help become whole. And I'm not saying it'll be instantly, but it sure can be. Consistency is the key with any healing. So whether you and I are working together with, you know, we're working, you're working with me as your health coach, or I'm helping you to understand and get to know your oils and the freedom they bring and helping you to understand how to use them they work. 
and their tools to help us on that journey. Wholeness means different things to different people, for sure. And all I'm going to be sharing about with these oils and some of the truths that Father has shown me and what I believe, these oils, these tools are gifts from Father. And these tools that I'm going to, these oils I'm going to share about are for those who have felt or feel broken and not good, maybe not good enough too. But when you use them, it'll remind you that you're already perfect in the Father's eyes. You're greatly loved and cherished. Greatly loved and cherished. And so the first one I want to talk about is frankincense. Because he has been said to be the king of the oils. He brings us truth. When we open that little bottle and take a whiff. He reveals any deceptions and false truth so that if you're open to this, go ahead and open your bottle, apply it to your pulse points, the crown at your head, and enjoy. Allow it to work. Frankincense opens our cells to receive. When we smell it, it opens us to possibilities. There's a reason it was given to our Savior. And so the reason I bring all of this up is because we all have experienced trauma, but oftentimes we don't know what to do with it. And therefore, we carry it into our relationships or our marriage. You know, the old saying about the suitcase and lugging that suitcase around. So what, are, what am I, you know... What am I? What are you? What are the contents being carried around in your suitcase? We all have different contents, our different histories. And Frank, I refer to him as Frank. I hope that's okay. Frankincense, Frank, likes to bring in the light to create new perspectives. perspectives. I can't say that perspectives, and reveal truth. He also helps us to recall memories with a spiritual understanding from the time you were born and brought into the world before all that life that you were dealt, that I was dealt. Cleansing us of the spiritual darkness. And so what a terrific time to do some of this work during the long hours, the long days of summer, where the light is abundant. The light is revealed in the dark corners of our hearts to help release hurts, maybe some wrong thinking that create, can create a healthy environment that allows love to grow. You know, the long days of summer when we... Uh, we're moving over here. It was like 830 at night. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was so late because those long hours, it's still daylight out like it's early lost track of time. So it's easy to do that. But the light reveals. And so remembering that is very helpful. And opening that bottle of Frank can help too. And, you know, I used to deal with abandonment issues, and I know some of the others have too. They, uh, some of the people who have shared their story with us, they shared the same abandonment feelings. So for me, finally, after years of prayer, seeking father and using my frankincense father released me i tell you i used to feel abandoned every spring why spring well it's because my hubby would go back to work in full swing in our business we had a landscaping 
and lawn maintenance business in Florida. And he would work long hours during the spring and summer, even into fall. I mean, like from March to October. <sighs> so that whole summer season and at the very start, it would be difficult for us. And I wanted freedom so bad from that feeling of abandonment that I would seek father all the time, but it still would creep in and become a problem. And I knew it had nothing to do with my husband and all to do with me not having my birth father in my life. And I carried that baggage, right? The suitcase into my marriage. And that often caused separation from us. And so those abandonment feelings can cause a separation from our father too. And I knew my husband loved me, but yet, right? How ridiculous. I knew it was, I wasn't abandoned because father had already, already shown me how much I was dearly loved in him. Like his word is what gave me freedom too. He called me, he carried me through some pretty difficult, I mean, very difficult times. Like when I was estranged from my mother, it was like a mourning of someone who had passed. Heart-wrenching, but he carried me through it. So I knew he loved me. And that's some hard stuff. And I know, I'm sure, your story has some hard stuff too. And I remember thinking in late August one year that we didn't go through the usual issues of me feeling abandoned. And what a joy it was that father had revealed the truth. He got rid of those deceptive lies that were in my head and created a beautiful story for my hubby and I. But I had to do the work. And so I invite you to do the work too. Open your frankincense when you're awaiting some truth to be revealed, whatever it may be. Is it a freedom from abandonment? Is it a freedom from something else? Frankincense is great for the brain period, like the pineal gland, pineal gland, however you want to say that, pineal, pineal, the pituitary gland, as well as the parathyroid, the thyroid, the eyes, the ears, the liver, oh, what else? A lot of other physical things too. So mixed with abandonment brings me to, I struggle with feelings of not being good enough. Because that abandonment led to that. And I know, again, most people deal or feel this at some point in their lives. Um, I used to think, and if I'm honest, I still do at times, that I couldn't face my fear of what if I'm not good enough. Like, what if one day I woke up and... I wasn't good enough for my husband. I wasn't good enough for my kids, whatever. Well, that's when I started, not because of, but I had started using juniper berry for my bladder and kidney health because as a health coach, I like to support my body and give it good things to support my organs, my muscles, my bones, all the things. And so I had started using this to uh, support that. And that's when I began to realize the emotional benefits of juniper berry. And so what I mean by that is it began to under, help me understand that life is a journey and the fears that I have in life are there to help me learn something about myself that I was loved and adored 
And no one, no one was going to take that away because father had already spoke that over me. And he speaks it over you too. Whether I believe it or not, at times, because remember that mind, that evil inclination wants to tell me otherwise, and I just take those thoughts captive. So Father already spoke it over me, and it doesn't matter how long I have to wait. Father's already handled it. So to not be afraid of the issues I had been avoiding for a long time, I could face them with a tenderness and understanding, understanding for that little girl or that young woman I was, I was, and that I'm not any longer. I can face life, you know, things that were done to me, things that I had done because of, things that were done to me or happened and I could walk in courage and Juniper Berry encouraged a greater wholeness in me and that there is nothing to fear when I acknowledge and accept all aspects of myself the good the bad the different etc and that's what these tools do they help us gain more understanding. Oh, so once I really started diving into the emotional aspects of essential oils, I began to walk in more freedom. I mean, who doesn't love freedom? We all want freedom, right? And this past year really showed it. We don't want to be confined, made to stay in the place that we're <sighs> locked in. So the next oil I'm going to talk about is spearmint. And one of my teachers suggested that I use spearmint on my throat so I could have more confident verbal speech. And I thought, hmm, well, let me tell you, it works. But it works in a healing way because it also helps inspire clear thought. And you need that when you're needing to talk or speak to someone about the hard stuff. You know, like talking to that future husband, whether it's our husband to be here on earth, whether it's our husband right now, or whether it's our husband, our holy one that we're gonna see on that day. Spearmint helps to not withhold our voice we can withhold our voice even from the holy one and hide right has anybody done that i've done it so when i went through training to teach boundless movement one of the weekends focused on the energy systems of the body specifically the discs or the wheels that refer to the energy centers in your body and these wheels or discs of spinning energy correspond to certain nerve bundles, uh, major organs. And you know, this makes me think of Ezekiel's wheel and the body. And I, I don't know, but that is something that I want to study even more and look at in the future because Father is so intricate that he gives us so many layers in his word. And I just, I can't help but wonder if somehow, some way Ezekiel's wheel is those energy centers. So anyway, back to that weekend, we were divided up into groups to do a deep dive into the seven different wheels, I'll call them. And isn't that just like father? to have me in a group that would teach me all about the throat and speaking and seven wheels. You know, that's another thing for those of you who know, Dr. Halissa Alwine's teaching on the seven, um, on the menorah, it, you know, you know, <laughs> if you know her, you know, okay. So don't, don't go off in that. So anyway, back to the weekend, I had always 
felt and asked father, why'd you give me this voice if I'm not supposed to use it? Because some people would say, oh, women are to, you know, be quiet. Um, and as a child, I was always told children are to be seen and not heard. And I know some of you have heard that too. You were probably told that as a child, um, if you're my age <laughs> or about, or, um, you know, if I said something wrong, I wasn't spoken to for a time. I was told I didn't say anything right. And, you know, there was other stuff relating to this particular wheel right here that was very eye-opening as to why I couldn't talk, why I felt I couldn't talk, why I'm quiet. And so now when I started using Spearmint, that began to change. And what's really cool is this is like how father works, at least in my life. He begins to give me freedom and then he continues to give me tools here and here and understanding here and here. And it's just like, it's mind blowing. And isn't father awesome in how he brings freedom? So I began to have confidence in expressing myself. It helped me to become emotional emotionally clear about I want, what I wanted to say and then actually say it. And that's something we need as we enter into marriage, the ability to speak. I need to speak to my father. I need to not hide behind my past, that luggage that I carry around because he said, it is as far as the east is from the west. It's in the bottom of the oceans the seas. So I use spearmint for this very reason. It works wonders for speech and I just love it in tea. And it's also been known to increase our metabolism, which may help us burn up fats and toxins in the body. And I think it's kind of funny when I think of that because I think of it as helping to burn up the lies that I believed about my voice and carry them out of my body, encouraging goodness to be spoken, life to be spoken. We need to learn to speak kind words to our groom, our earthly groom. We need to bless. He says death and life are in the power of the tongue in Proverbs. And there's so many more words about speaking and about our tongue. We need to speak about truth from a place of love. So I've got a few more, a couple more that I want to go into over the next little bit here. And the next one's wild orange. And I truly love wild orange because it reminds me of the sweetness of life. I grew up in Florida and just love the smell of orange blossoms and eating an orange right off the tree. It reminds me of that innocence of a child and that there's much, much to life no, for no matter what hardships I face. Wild orange helps to open me up to the fact that life offers abundance. Like the child who embraces life with surprise with creativity, with enthusiasm. Remember if you have children or nieces or nephews or grandchildren, that light bulb that goes off, the expression of awe that a child has, we need to be like that, like that child. For it's been written in Matthew, truly I say to you, unless you become changed, become like the children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Children are creative and full of energy. Wish I had their energy. There's a reason we have children when we're young. Anyway, wild orange brings me back to that, to that space. Because let's face it, we may need a little bit of creativity in marriage at some point, right? And so when it comes to preparing for my groom, I think of it like keeping the creativity and the liveliness in the marriage. Being prepared 
with maybe a list of things we like to do when we met during that courtship. And this is our courtship. We're learning what our groom likes. We're learning. And so what did we like? Did we like a night out to his favorite movie? Or a nice dinner or a walk on the beach or a hike in the mountains? How about some soft music? Candlelight and sweet talk about the future. Abba tells us our future. And because believe me, while you're waiting yet for another thing, like him coming home from work or a business trip, the kids going to sleep or whatever, you're going to be thankful that you made a list to help with the waiting period. You'll be busy being creative during the waiting using Wild Orange. Maybe a, a bedroom makeover is in order. Remember, there was a time when the bedroom was fun. It can be again, being creative. I know when I'm waiting on something, my mind can play lots of tricks on me, causing lots of undue stress. And I can lose my sense of security or safety net, so to speak. It's like my brain reverts to those emotions I spoke of earlier, like abandonment or not good enough. Well, you know, the mind plays horrible tricks sometimes. And when I realize that's what's going on, I grab my myrrh, next oil, myrrh, and I take a nice long whiff. Now let's just say I didn't really like myrrh at first, but that's because I felt unsafe. And when we're in the waiting period, waiting period of waiting for the groom, let's just say there's a lot of thoughts that can come down the pike causing us to lose our sense of security and begin thinking, does he still love me? Is he really going to marry me? Am I pretty enough? Am I fit enough? Good enough? You fill in the blank. Am I good enough for my groom? Remember what he says. Myrrh helps to reconnect us and ground us. I'm just going to leave that there. But with speaking about grounding us, Arborvitae is another oil that may help with this. It's all about divine grace. And as we wait, he continues to show us his divine grace because we are still learning how to be the bride, the bride he wants us to be. Just like our earthly marriage, we are learning how to walk showing grace or not. Oh, I said it, didn't I? In last week's portion, and many of the portions, it's all about our response. We can choose words of life or words of death. You know, marriage is easy. <laughs> yes, it's easy. Relationships are easy. Marriage is easy. It's the being the not being selfish, that's hard. It's all about the giving up of ourselves. We want to hold on to what we think is right, what we like, what we should or shouldn't do. And a friend told me a couple years ago, we should get rid of the shoulds, the woulds, the coulds out of our language because there's expectations there of someone else and usually they're unrealistic expectations. But we're so caught up in our selfishness that we don't. We don't get rid of the shoulds, but we should. <laughs> Just a little humor there. So that's where divine grace comes in. And for us and for our husbands, every time I use Arborvitae, I think of sacrifice the sacrifice made for me to be sanctified over and over again and over and over again, helping me to surrender 
to my father first, because then all the rest falls into place. It reminds me to offer the divine grace to whoever I'm waiting on to. Divine grace. That is a thought. And so my next oil I want to share is rosemary. And rosemary, oh, she brings us from broken to whole. She causes us to look deeper than normal and ask more soul searching questions to receive more answers. She assists us in learning new information. The time before the wedding is a time of transition. There may be a lot of thoughts going on about what it'll be like to finally be married, right? There's just so many questions. So look to Rosemary to bring the wholeness to your soul. Watch and observe your groom. What he does, what he wants from you, and how you can begin to embrace those differences he has set before you. <sighs> that he has set before us. So to finish off our oils in this blend, and I encourage you to put it on you, mix it up in a little bottle by itself, add some fractionated coconut oil to it, put it in your diffuser, Roll it on your pulse points and enjoy it. So our last one that I want to add is rose. Rose is one of the highest vibrational oils coming in at 320 megahertz. Remember I talked about Abba's energy, vibration. He spoke and his vibration created the world energy. So rose is one of the highest. And I think of Holissa's teaching and how the opening of how the ro the essence of a rose brings about change. From a tiny little bud, it blossoms, it becomes a beautiful flower. I wish I had a rose here, but I don't. And each day, that you look at that rose opening, it gives a different viewpoint. This is where the spirit wants to take us. That opening up little by little so that we can grab all that the spirit wants to teach us. But we do have to throw off the chains. And rose speaks of divine love. And from my experience, especially what, what the world has gone through this last year, we want to know that we are unconditionally loved. And Rose invites us to experience the unwavering, unchanging, unconditional love of Father. And in the process, we're able to offer that to others. This love heals hearts. It dresses all the wounds restores us individuals to authenticity, wholeness, and purity. And so the combination of these oils together is super powerful. And so I encourage you, get your oils out, use them, enjoy them, because that's the tools Father gives us. And I believe we're going to be back in the garden. We're making our journey back to the garden. I know lots of teachers have taught about this. And we're making our way back to the garden. And the gar garden's where it started. And if that's the case, his flowers. I mean, think of Adam and Eve walking through that garden. And Rosemary's there. And it touches them. And they're smelling it. And it's offering that fragrance and healing 
or that rose that we smell. You know, it's just beautiful. So the oil can be your friend and help. bring you freedom and we want to enter freedom with our father in heaven with our groom so break open those oils ladies enjoy enjoy and i think that is our time <laughs> <laughs>